Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Kaplan Point Laboratories Limited Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Dollar Capital. As an as a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kapil Yadav from Dollar Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Dollar Capital, we welcome you all to the Q3 FY24 conference call of Kaplan Point Laboratories Limited. I take this opportunity to welcome the management of Kaplan Point Labs, represented by Mr. C.C. Parthipan, who is the chairman of the company, and Mr. Vivek Parthipan, who is the CEO of the company. And also we have today with us Dr. Sridhar Ganeshan, Managing Director, Mr. D. Murlidharan, CFO, and Mr. Satya Narayanan, Deputy CFO. And now I would like to hand the conference over to Ms. Kaplan Point Management to take the proceeding forward. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Kapil and uh, Dolit Capital. Hello and good evening to everyone. Welcome to our earnings call to discuss the results of uh, the third quarter and nine months uh, for financial year 2024. Please note that a copy of all our disclosures are available on the investor section of our website and as well as the stock exchanges. And do note that anything said on this call which reflects our outlook for the future or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces. The conference call is being recorded and the tra transcript along with the audio of the same would be made available on the company's website as well as the exchanges. Also do note that the audio of this conference call are copyright material of Kaplan and cannot be copied rebroadcasted or attributed in the press or media without specific written consent of the company. I would like to now hand over the floor to our chairman for his opening remarks. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our investors call. You are aware that Kaplan discovered new pathways in the roadless travel. We also learned that if you are unwilling to risk the unusual, we have to settle for the ordinary. The smaller geographies that are considered insignificant by the major companies have become the center of gravity for our core business. The current cash flow and profits are mainly from the smaller markets of Central America in addition to US now. We are entering into bigger geographies such as US, Mexico, Chile and others. The US story will be narrated by the COO and I will talk now on Mexico. Mexico is the second largest market in Latin America, and Mexico's advantage is its geographical proximity and cultural compatibility to both South and North America. We have already filed 24 products in Mexico and received the registration of five in the recent past. We are sure of increasing our filing to at least 60 to 70 before the end of 2024. We already started outsourcing dossiers from some reputed companies from China. You are also aware that we have been exporting quality products directly from China to Latin America, especially to the smaller markets. Now we are moving to the next level of business in the form of outsourcing from China companies for the regulated markets. Here, we are using our advantages and experience of catering to the markets such as US, which helps us to the bigger companies in China for our second innings in the larger markets of Latin America. We also understand that there are some big companies in India which imports insulin and other biological products from China in bulk and do the fill and finish before they export to the regulated markets after conducting the necessary clinical trials. We do have plans to identify some good companies to do the same, as we also have the necessary wherewithals in the form of CRO, which has been approved by USFDA, where we can conduct the clinical trials before we market the products. This will be an asset-like model where we do not have to invest huge money to manufacture the biological products from the scratch. We're also getting into business of manufacturing double chamber P 
PFS for the Central American market shortly. The machinery will be installed either in March or April, and the restations may take six to nine months before we hit the market. Here, the volume of business may not be high, but the profitability will be very good as there is only one competitor. That too is a multinational company. We'll also be starting one more warehouse in Guatemala borders, which is closer to Mexico. And many of our customers feel that it's very difficult and expensive for them to come to the capital of Guatemala. This will also increase our profitability and cash flow in the coming years. You are aware that we had a stall in CPHI Barcelona, and the response is really good. Hence, we are planning to go for more and more of these type of stalls in various expos to reach to the B2P customers too. The COO will also brief you about the participation of the expos in USA to understand the uninsured and underinsured customers of the US market. We will continue to focus on the bottom of the pyramid and also the bottom of the business pyramid where the traffic for competition is always lesser. Now, let me share a few words about the status of our facilities. We have completed phase two in our CSL and the commercial production of line five started in the mid-October of 2023. That's one of the reasons of nine months sales of CSL, which is 40% higher than the previous year. We also have done some work in phase three where we still decide, where we will not decide anything in terms of actually starting something. And we are verifying the technical feasibility and commercial viability of fill and finish of biological products, which includes insulin. Kaplan One is our ANCO facility, where we are all set for the Indian inspection on the 12th and 13th of this month for the tablets and capsules. We also have under AMCO registration in Latin American markets, where we are very confident of doing business in the initial stage itself, unlike Kaplan Steriles. Our injectable and API for AMCO facilities will also be completed in nine to 10 months from now. We are sure of going doing profitable business in future after the completion of our injectable division and the registration. Also true that we have been delaying the general API facility in Visa as we are looking for some niche products other than our own injectables API for captive consumption. Finally, we have appointed an API expert who filed 10 DMS for some niche products and he has joined with his team recently. We will now focus on the completion of Visa's API at the earliest. Now let me come to the important area of my focus for the last two, two and a half years of managing the CSL facility to make it very unique. My stay in the factory initially and the subsequent stay are closer to the factory made me to understand the importance of perfection for integrity, quality, and safety, in addition to improvements in productivity. I personally went to the shop floor areas many times in the day and night to found out some disobedient minds whom I removed them later. I went to start this factory next to my village only to help the poor not to become a poor. I also learned that bottom-up approach which helps the company to reduce the deviations and OAS which are very important for any pharmaceutical company and needless to say, it is pertinent to a US FDA facility. Further, we have also digitized many areas except the three important areas such as logbook, BMR, and BPR. Our e-logbook will be completed by May or June. The remaining two, BMR and BPR, will also be digitized before the end of 2024. In addition to this, we have also installed cameras and biometric access control to monitor and review the activities of people in various areas. While ensuring the empathetic way to our employees, we also felt that the review, monitor, and control are mandatory for ensuring integrity, quality, 
safety and productivity the last but not least is that we are constructing a free hospital mainly for cancer and cardiac care and also prevention and rehabilitation of patients with stroke which for which there is no hospital in the entire districts finally today's business is all about chance encounters and how to translate into choice architecture our choice and choice architecture will make us to reach our dream destination in the years to come thank you thank you very much now i will hand over actually uh, the phone to vivek thank you uh, chairman i'd like to give a, a little update on the on the capital sterile business which is uh, much more focused uh, towards the us we've had another encouraging quarter for capital sterile as you would have seen uh, we've matched the previous year's full say full year sales within the first three quarters of uh, uh, this year and uh, with the rate at which the current uh, quarter is heading in uh, we feel comfortable that uh, we should uh, finish in a fairly strong position for this year in addition to expansion of capacities we've also managed to put those capacities to use quickly which is uh, important we feel because we were running on two commercial uh, lines and then we were getting quite a lot of approvals which needed a third line as well to ease the pressure from the first two lines and uh, we've been able to uh, successfully manage that in the last quarter and continues on uh, in this quarter also uh more importantly we have not lost track of our filings which is uh, important for our future growth potential we are happy to inform you that we have around 14 products that are under active review with fda and we expect most of these to be approved within the next 12 months some of these are uh, ophthalmic products which we have a line that is largely underutilized at the facility so we will be aiming at launching these products as close to the approval date as possible the rest of the products and the review are all uh, our under active development are a healthy combination of injectables and vials uh, ready to use injectable bags uh, injectable suspensions emulsions and also ophthalmics we will also shortly be working on a pipeline of pre fill syringe uh, products as well so you can imagine that we are trying to cover a broad spectrum of products that are used in hospital and clinical settings this will certainly be augmented uh, when some of our oncology injectables start to feature uh, in the coming years onwards we are also uh, pleased to inform you that our front end in the us csl usa inc is making good progress on the state licensing activities front in the next 8 months we will have uh, licenses to distribute our products in our own label in all 50 states in the us we hope to launch around 6 uh, to 7 products uh, in the initial period within the first year itself and as chairman was saying uh, we are going to be attending more and more expos in the us trying to identify the underinsured and uninsured population which we uh, believe is anywhere between 30 to 35% at this point and uh, these pretty much belong to the tier 2 tier 3 cities and also tier 2 tier 3 buyers of the us which is what uh, our focus has always been on including in latin america this also will not have any impact on our current uh, business partnerships in the us which is more of a b2b model because our partners are much larger in size and they are much more focused towards the gpo related business uh, we have also filed several products in uh, mexico canada south africa australia etc and we can start to see some non us based revenue within the coming uh, 18 months um so overall we are making good progress on the us side and with prices stabilizing and also injectable shortages continuing we feel that our razor sharp focus on digitalization and quality and supply continuity at capital sterile will certainly augment the company's progress in the years going forward i would like to uh, uh, request our cfo to uh, so for our cfo to throw a little light on the numbers before we can open up the floor for questions thank you thank you mr vivek uh, good evening to all of you who have joined us in the call uh, welcome you all once again this is murali dharan cfo uh one more quarter with the gratifying results uh the nine months have been uh, pretty good as we have already reached uh, 2000 fy22 sales in uh, the nine months of fy24 uh csl our subsidiary has also reached the entire uh, fy23 results in uh, nine months of fy24 which is a commendable uh, achievement 
Vitan. And also, as we have been talking about sustenance of contribution margins and the back level, we are way above what we have promised to the market. We said we will be around 55%. Average, we are at 57.1% for the nine, nine months. And we hope that we will be able to maintain around 56% for the coming quarters as well. And as far as the fact is concerned, we are at 26.4%. As against the 25%, what we said we would be able to sustain. Even the one off quarters will have higher margins and higher profitability. And what is heartening here is the sales have grown by uh, 15%, which is about 160 crores in terms of number, but the profits of the profit before tax have grown by 90 crores, meaning the 117 crores increase in contribution, 75% of which has directly flown into PVT. Uh, since we have been very discreet in handling our expenses, about a couple of years back uh, when we took over the um, uh, channel partners and then brought them under our fold, uh, there was uh, some concern about the expenses going up or not. not. It is all bearing fruits now and everybody is contributing and then um, uh, we have been able to contain the expenses at a manageable level and that, that has shown in the flow of 75% in increasing contribution margin to the PBT directly. Uh, and as far as the uh, other numbers are concerned, which is there already with you for a while now, and um, I wouldn't take much of your time. And if there are any few questions to be asked, uh, we will be more than glad to take those questions. Thank you, Mr. Gay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, we can now open up the floor for questions, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Rohit Singh from Invest Analyst and please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Mr. Rohit. Uh, am I audible? Yes, but your yes, sound is echoing. Uh, yeah. Good evening, sir. Uh, is, is, is it fine now? Oh, yes, it Hello. is fine. Uh, okay, right. Uh, good evening, sir. Congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, my question is on uh, towards the uh, like. Uh, do you see any kind of near to medium term risk, uh, either due to Red Sea crisis or any other specific reason, uh, to maintain our growth trajectory going ahead? Because like uh, you mentioned in your presentation as well, uh, due to Red Sea crisis, we have been shifted uh, to CIF model uh, from FOV model. So can you please put some color on that? What is the situation right now and how it is going to be in, up in upcoming quarters? Okay. Uh, thank you. Red Sea issues will not have any major impact to us. The reason being, we have our stocks next to the customer. If you look at our stocks, actually, we always keep our stocks, sufficient stocks next to the customer in our warehouses. We also have stocks in transit. In addition to that, as uh, we also actually have uh, some of our consignments, or most of our consignments are not, not rooted to Red Sea nowadays. There is one issue in the farmers, there's a slight delay, like you no know, seven to 10 days delay is there, and also slight increase in uh, what do you call you know, freight. These two things can be handled very effectively by way of increasing the prices. So the products that already reached to the warehouse, we are now in a position to increase the price because of this issue. So it's going to actually help us in terms of profit in future. So far, we don't have any major issues. And on top of it, I would like to tell you one thing which is very important in the form of liquid assets of the company. Today, we have liquid assets to the tune of 1,550 crores, whereas our total revenue is only 1,290 crores. I'm sure this will clearly show you that, you know, we have a very healthy, actually, you know, balance sheet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that seems good. And so, uh, like you mentioned about the biologics uh, uh, importing into India and then doing some clin uh, clinical trials. So can you put some yeah. more color, like what kind of opportunity do you see here or whether it will be done via Kathleen Sterile or we are looking for a, a new facility their own? 
this of course you no know, we can either do it there or as a new facility depending upon the viability what i have found in fact i have checked with some actually consultants and i have also met couple of people who have actually who have been doing this business by way of importing from actually china from good companies and then what they do is they, as i told you in course of my speech they do the fill and finish and they do the clinical trials depending upon the country if you want to launch in india then you have to do clinical trials in indian uh, people for which you know our cro will be very useful if you have to launch in other countries then of course you know you have to do clinical trials in that particular country before we launch the product but not many companies of our size will be in a position to think of actually getting into this business the reason being a we have exposure to china market which are our that we have been doing business for uh, the last 15 16 years b we are also our that our cash flow is very comfortable to import and then do the clinical trials and export also to any country wherever there is an opportunity is it is it enough for uh, is it okay hello are you able to hear me please oh uh, yes sir we are able to hear you i think rohit mr rohit's line is disconnected oh uh, we will take the next question from the line of satyam sharma from narnul narnulia financial services limited please go ahead yes sir good evening sir yes good evening good evening yeah yeah sir i have one question like uh, you in presentation you have mentioned that uh, you are converting from fob to cif is that will be like margin dilutive or uh, uh, what is the the issue with this now i will request my cfo to give you the reply to it please to yeah. give you the answer yeah yeah uh, this this last we said it is only to address actually there, this won't be any impact on the margin as such the the there are two things we are trying to achieve by way of uh, converting them into ca from fob one being a corporate group we are able to uh, mobilize uh, the optimize the freight cost and available as uh, we are able to um, pool the goods and then our container uh, farming will happen faster than earlier right and then availability of ship also uh, will be faster and then uh, we will be able to reach the goods uh, earlier to the uh, the port actually as we have mentioned in the past we have a warehouse in uh, gautamala the, the other uh, say, say countries can be serviced from there once the goods reach to gautamala there some of the countries it goes by road one country it go by uh, ship the equator is for this other countries it can go by in maximum of 2 to 3 days when we are able to uh, pull the uh, goods for uh, gautamala we are able to get Uh, earlier uh, containment, earlier ship availability, and then also um, freight uh, advantage. This this is the reason, I yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I think like it will be more efficient, but on margin side, other expense will increase, or there's it will nothing, be like stagnant. One thing, one thing. There's nothing to worry about on the margin side because the freight we were incurring earlier will be slightly hmm. incurring lesser only. okay sir thank you and, and sir like most of, here i would like to add one more thing except hmm. two countries most of the countries are connected by road gautamala yeah. to honduras hon and gautamala to el salvador gautamala to actually nicaragua gautamala to panama gautamala to actually all these countries they are all connected by road except dominican republic and ecuador as you rightly said okay sir thank you sir and like uh, you have told earlier that uh, we will have 300 crore revenue from kaplan ester light so we will be able to achieve in fy24 300 crores uh see now we are all set actually in the form of you know achieving something either is closer to that one or maybe this reason the only issue sometimes there is a supply chain problems which are also over Yes. Today we have orders. We have enough capacity to actually manufacture. To be very honest with you, there is one API which we are expecting now. It may, we may get it. Ninety-nine percent will get it. If we get it, yes, we will be able to achieve something closer to what we have committed, or exactly what we have committed. If that is not available, because you know very well, is especially for the U.S. market, it's not like other countries where can where you can use actually API which is. which is been actually uh, what i call you no know, mentioned in the dossier 
we cannot we are not allowed and even if you want to change the fa that takes actually its own sweet time so this is the only issue which we have now if everything depends upon maybe a week to 10 days time oh, when yes, we will come to know i would ask yes, actually the ceo also to say few words on that yeah q3 so number, q3 number for captain sterling q3 number so we're at about 210 crore uh, we've in total. fact uh, uh, we've in fact completed whatever target that we set uh, to achieve for ourselves in fact we are confident that q4 also will uh, will be able to achieve but like chairman said there is one uh, particular uh, raw material that we are expecting but uh, so far so good we don't want to uh, uh, you know pro- project a negative picture or anything like that but even if not we'll go very close to that 300 number yes sir uh, okay sir thank you so much sir and uh, congrats on the good set of numbers thank, thank you. you thank you very much sir thank you okay sir thank you we have a next question from the line of ca garvit goel from invest analysis advisory please go ahead Yes, I'm audible. Yes, sir, yeah. you are audible. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, my question is on the uh, delays happening on the uh, our CAPEX plans, particularly on the general APIs uh, and oncology API and the OSD facility. So is there any specific reason, like in this particular quarter, uh, we have changed our presentation and I think uh, there is a delay of two quarters uh, as compared to the last presentation. So uh, can you uh, please put some color on the, uh, on the delays happening on yeah. this ground? yeah i would like to tell you as i told you in course of my speech then general api we wanted to complete it for the captive consumption later we have found out that there is an opportunity for us actually to add some more and that to you know uh, we were looking for a niche actually you know products which of course we have found a person as i told you before so now that actually it will be speeded up and it's true it was delayed the reason i have mentioned in course of my actually speech also one coming to onco we thought of doing it actually in the existing facility and uh, we have been told by actually our head of uh, project that we could do it there but later we felt you know it will not be that viable in the sense you know this is a product api you need more land when you expand at a later date will not be in a position to accommodate the api there So now what we have done is we have bought land in the form of 18 and a half acres in an industrial estate called Teruai. That's where we have decided to start it and we are going to start it now and we will be able to complete it in the next 9 to 10 months time from now. So we are completely shifting our oncology plan, that's what you are saying? No, we are not shifting the oncology, we have never started. We are, we are starting our oncology tablet capsules as I told you. the commercials will start by actually march before march and injectables will take 8 to 9 months the machineries are on the way we will install the machineries and actually do the registration and the uh, hello uh, hello so i to inform the line for the management from parthiban has been okay. disconnected we will okay. reconnect Yeah. While you reconnect, I will just explain what Chairman was saying. My line, my line is audible. Yes, sir. Your line is audible. Yeah. So as Chairman was saying, uh, when it comes to the oncology plan, the initial, uh, uh, the initial aim was to have it as close as possible to the formulation plan, the initial formulation plan as well. But now, what we decided, because as we expand into oral solid dosages, also into oncology, this might require an expansion of capacity. So. we've decided to play, put this uh, project into the stairway uh, uh, industrial estate where we are going to start our, our osd plant also so in the next 9 to 10 months we will see uh, most of the progress being completed in that so that's what i was saying like uh, is it the same place or the same land where we are expanding on or the place has no. been changed that's what i was uh, no it's a different place different place it's uh, the one that we are uh, we have already completed the osd the oral solid onco uh, facility and also where the injectable one is going to come from that's called kakalur and uh, this is a different place to the one that we are going to start our uh, onco api one that's called therwai okay. so to be very precise the uh, we see the uh, our head of the projects was actually interested in doing it in the form of a pilot plant in the existing facility where we are starting our tablet capsule and injection but later we felt the pilot plant may not be enough when we expand actually our operations to various countries that's why we stopped at that facility 
that is kakalur now we are moving to terwa industrial estate understood sir and sir i think mm-hmm. uh, i was not able to heard uh, hear you properly uh, you mentioned about the reason for uh, shifting from fob to ci cif so can you please uh, give some highlight on that that i would request my cfo to give you the this one uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Now, I, uh, what i said was that uh, fob to cif is for two reasons one as there has been some disru- uh, disruption in the logistics and supply chain the the yst also has been going up uh, as compared to the previous uh, time we thought it will make a prudent idea to put all the uh, consignments put all the uh, consignments and then ship it to gautamala on a fob basis so uh, a basis so that they reach them and then get redistributed by road as per chairman was saying it's about uh, two days three days uh, uh, transit time from uh, gautamala to these countries by road only two markets which are uh, dominican republic and ecuador are uh, taking longer time from gautamala we will address that so we will achieve two things one optimization of freight and also uh, making things uh, making sure that the uh, routes leave faster as the chairman has been mentioning uh, um, very often our strength has been that having the inventory closer to the customer even today when we say that we are not uh, disturbed or uh, affected in the near future because of this safety issue is that that we have enough for enough goods available in our own warehouses in the market such that the, the, the sales would not suffer so you are saying via this route uh, we will be able to uh, uh, not take the products faster as compared to the sea that's what the, i was saying the route 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 doesn't change route doesn't change there are two things if you were to make a form a container only for one market it takes a long longer time and availability of ships are that much limited when i am pulling all the goods and send it to one particular warehouse this is the availability i will be able to form containers faster than earlier and the immediate available ship i can uh, ship out the goods I, i am not changing the route that that, that is yeah. not possible also yeah. Yeah. i'll just add uh, i'll just add two points here uh, see uh, note that around 30 32% of our uh, containers go from china which actually takes a different route and even from india the one which used to take the red sea route now the transit time is increased by about 10 days as chairman said because they avoid that route and they go across the horn of africa so that's also a reason so the you know consignment is not at risk but it is delayed by about uh, 10 days so rather than shipping it to each and every country we pull it and then ship it to one country and move it by road from there that's basically what we are trying to achieve understood sir understood that makes sense uh, thank you sir that that's it for my side all the best for the future thank you so much thank you, thank you so much thank you we have a next question from the line of alisha mahavla from envision capital please go ahead hi so good evening thank you for the opportunity first question is on on the latam business um sorry to interrupt you alisha uh, your line is bit clear. disturbed is is am i audible now oh yeah it's better yeah uh yeah, i just wanted to understand on the latam business last couple of quarters it looks like the growth has moderated uh, quite significantly um but at the start of the year we had spoken of for uh, various new products that we will be starting so gel etc um there was also a 4 million on co product that i think was supposed to start from h2 but we're not seeing any pick up is there anything more specific that's happening in the latin market for us currently no no can i give uh, me are you able to hear properly because i uh, yeah one, i mean I'm the question to hear I, was, properly. i was also not able to hear very well i think uh, i think the line can is you please repeat or no i think line is uh, not very clear please very clear because only were latam latam again and again i was able to hear please sorry sir, sorry to no, no no problem sir i hope i'm audible now is it better yes please yes sir i want to understand the latam business uh, the growth has uh, moderated to a very large extent versus what we used to do earlier which was 20% plus now we're in low double digits at the start of the year we had said there were multiple initiatives new products that were starting soft gel there was a 4 million on co product that was supposed to start from h2 uh but we are not seeing any significant pick up so just wanted to understand are there any other challenges or um what is what is happening at a in a latam core geography right now let me answer to these questions this way because we have been telling to actually our investors ours is actually a company 
which is driven by the profits and cash flow we are not very keen to increase the top line you know very well top line is vanity bottom line is sanity cash is actually cash in the bank is king if you want to increase the business you could have increased and what has been happening actually is in the form of like you know strengthening the bottom line that's the reason i mentioned to another investor that our liquid asset is in the form of 1550 crore which is much more than actually the revenue of 9 months so when such is the case uh, i'm sorry to differ with you that you know we have saturated uh, in central america or latin america but again definitely we will have to do, we'll do well once we enter into the bigger geographies of south america like mexico brazil chile colombia and all but these countries as you know well it takes time to complete the registrations and then you know these are countries where you will not be in a position to do big business with 10 tall products we have to have different buckets in one big basket which is going to happen actually say one year or two years from now that's the time we will do you know again extraordinarily good business the way you are but to the to my knowledge i also feel sincerely that our bottom line and cash flow is very very comfortable understood sir and while i do understand that we've always been more uh, careful of the profitability of the business that we do just wanted to understand where the next leg of growth will come from which you have explained will be once we enter the new geographies for which the work is ongoing my second question is on the gross margins which sequentially have declined we did about 60% in q2 which has come down to 56% um could or could the cfo sir please explain this yeah can yeah yeah i'll just uh, answer your first question then come to the second question actually the the, the growth has been about uh, close to 11% of the the conventional business you have to have the, the two factors in account one on the base effect okay so on the larger volume we are growing at 11% on the lower volume we were going at about 17 18% in the past right that is one thing secondly on the gross margin if you have attended our con call last quarter we have already addressed that last quarter we have been only promising around 55% as the sustainable gross margin last quarter as a boom to so 60% we could get because of some good orders on some institutional business on oncology um area and the 60% was realized and we said we cannot uh, expect that to be repeated going forward so that is the reason why we said and then if you see 9 9 months we are at 51% and 55 is what we promised 56 is what we have achieved as far as the fact is concerned we have promised 25 we have achieved for more than that so uh, this answer right like to... the last I... one we address this point let me also add some more points actually to your question because since you mentioned what is the path forward see the status as of now to actually 5 years from now i would put it this way see like you know one year two years three years four years five years is a period where we sincerely feel that will be in actually a uh when you're very 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 comfortable position in the form of sustainability and scalability the reason is we have a asset like model and we also have the asset right in the form of vertically integrated company where we will be manufacturing intermediates apis formulations of all sorts of formulations starting from osd osd armco then we'll have liquid oral suspension ointments and all that including various kinds of injectables then we are also moving from smaller geographies to larger geographies actually of markets which means the volume of business is always high for example uh, the population of all these companies where all these countries put together in central america is 10 to 20% of actually mexico which means mexican market is 10 times higher than what we are doing currently there it may not happen you know very well you know the things cannot happen overnight it takes over time so which means that's the reason i am telling for so let me also tell you in the next 2 to 3 years we will have all the facilities and then second maximum registrations will be completed in majority of the countries in the next 3 to 5 years and then the facilities will not be actually you know uh, manual it will be digitalized and it will also be integrated with cctv cameras and other things so that it becomes easy for us to review monitor and control everything in addition to this one 
as i told you we'll also think of going for a asset like model for products which are biologicals which is biosimilar or no uh, what do you call insulin these are things even the big companies initially they used to import and test the waters and they all went for their own actually manufacturing of course they are all companies which have deep pockets we also will be in a position to do it you know after we test the waters with actually importing of insulin and other things for which we have the necessary wherewithals which i told you, you know in course of actually my speech then the surplus cash today we have around 800 crore even if you spend 3 400 500 crores in the next two years we'll have 1000 crore that's the time you will think of acquisition of brands acquisition of actually companies for domestic business and in addition to that we always look for something unique in the form of acquisition of distribution companies which will make us understand where we will have to sell our generics because generic is a business there is nothing in the form of marketing generic business is based on supply and demand you only need to understand how many products we have what is the cost at which we will be able to supply and the quality wise once it is approved by us fda everybody thinks the quality will not be an issue is true also so what is important is the distribution channels and the places where this can reach by avoiding the intermediaries then coming back to one more thing in the form of uh, uh latam i am sure in 5 to 6 years from now will be the number one company in all humility i can claim that we can do it the reason being in the smaller geographies where all these six countries put together population is less than tamil nadu we are doing close to 1000 2300 crore once we get into the bigger geographies as i told you in the years to come we will do the best of the best business and we are sure of becoming number one also in these countries these are the few things i would like to convey to prove that we are a force to reckon with in the years to come thank you so much for the detailed answer i absolutely agree with you that i i also believe that kaplan will be the number one company just one last Madam. question sir thank you uh, sir last Please. La- uh, sorry to interrupt, ma'am. Uh, may I request you to rejoin the question queue as there are several participants waiting for their turns. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one per participants. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the question queue. We have a next question from the line of Sachin Kasera from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir, and congrats on good set of numbers. Good afternoon. Yeah, I had a couple of questions on Kaplan Sterile. So, what would be the current capacity utilization at Kaplan Sterile? Yeah, with the addition of this new line, we are at a good uh, shape right now. See, the thing is, we don't do much uh, CMO business at all. In fact, uh, what we had signed in 2017-18 uh, periods, we do a little bit of CMO. but the rest of the capacity i would say more than uh, you know 70 80% of our uh, usable capacity we are actually using for our own now with uh, line 5 that's come into place we actually have expanded the capacity by more than double you know so we are actually good uh, till about i would say next 4 uh, to 5 years at least we don't need any further expansion but of course we will have to see as and when the business comes in and then if at a, at a certain point we feel that there are some good opportunities that can really strengthen the bottom line and uh, top line as well when it comes to cmo we might look at further expansion which is why we have a uh, phase 3 the where we have completed the shell and we've left it uh, or basically we've slowed down a little bit just to understand how well we'll be able to utilize the existing capacities before we can move there and once this line 6 is completed what is the peak revenue we can do in capital surplus can we do like Uh, 120 150 million dollars in next 3 4 years well, see we we never get into numbers on these right so obviously especially in the formulation facility with uh, where we are a multi product unit it's very difficult to uh, uh, predict what the peak capacity is going to be and obviously as you know the us is a very dynamic space right so what is that 10 today is that 15 tomorrow or 7 the next day so we don't want to restrict ourselves to a certain number or something like that what we feel uh, is that with the pipeline that we have uh, in terms of r&d with the pipeline that we have in terms of what is uh, uh, under review by fda 
we are fairly well covered till about 27, 28 at least, 2027 and 28. But uh, peak revenue, you know, we've given a number out in uh, public domain. We uh, feel fairly confident that we can get to that number within that period or probably one uh, year after that. I would like to add one more thing here. Since we are planning to go for our own front end, we will follow the policy of pick and choose. Not necessarily we will have to actually, you know, manufacture all and sundry. We will go for products where the profitability is good. That's how we'll choose also once we establish our front end presence in US, which is in the initial stages, which is in the nascent stage now. Sure. And so you mentioned that, you know, this year we could be closer to 300 uh, somewhere there. Any sense you could give us how is the next year looking like for capital arrives? And I believe we have some private equity investors there now that has become very profitable. Are we looking to buy them out or are we going, going to go for an IPO if you could give us some sense on that, on capital travel? It's too early to take a decision on that. They are comfortable, we are comfortable. We are only focusing on actually business now. We are not thinking of actually who will buy whom or actually how to go for a public issue, please. Sure. And can you give us some sense on financial next year? How is it looking for capital storage? As, as the COO said, it's a very dynamic business, especially the US one. As as he said, what is important is actually is to increase actually the buckets, various buckets in the form of liquid injectables. And then uh, we, now we have, uh, we started getting approvals for ophthalmic products. We'll be getting some more products in the form of bags. And then, you know, we also will go for actually our uh, ANCO injectables at a later date. So all these buckets will form one basket. That time what will happen, the situation will totally change. The US market actually is for companies who can give a variety and actually uh, novelty to the customer. And now it's changing. Some of the big guys, in fact, actually they, approach, they, have, they approached us and the Vivek will be able to tell us about this. One of these three companies which has approached us and, you know, he has already, you know, uh, tied with them and, you know, is, uh, is, I think, you know, you can tell about our Mekis yeah. and Mekis is the one. No? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, see, of course, we are very confident that next year is going to be uh, uh, quite a reasonable growth as well, right? But we don't want to put a number to it or we don't want to put a percentage to it. We know that we have a very decent pipeline of which uh, multiple products will start to get approved over the next uh, few quarters. Of course, some of that is not in our hands. What we uh, expect to receive, let's say, in April might end up uh, uh, getting approved in June or something like that. So which is why we don't want to give out a certain number or anything like that. We are very confident about where the company is going. And then uh, another one year hence, I think we will have a very decent uh, basket of products. Now, with all of these approvals coming through, we are starting to get uh, uh, more and more visible in the U.S., uh, which is why I think it is that uh, very good time for us to uh, launch our own label in the U.S. And one of the three largest distributors uh, in the U.S. has already tied up with us on about four, uh, five products now. And we're in active discussions to uh, create a private label for them for another four to five products also. So it is, again, in the nascent stages, and uh, we see that there is a certain level of disruption that is happening in the U.S. also with companies such as Civica and all of them coming and then making beans directly with manufacturers and stuff. So we think that there's going to be more opportunities in that direction, and we don't want to confine ourselves to the GPO space or the CMO space or anything like that. We want to be open to all ideas. And so far, so good. You know, we'll, we'll be patiently cautious about uh, what we what we. Uh, want to do in the U.S. Sure. And just first last question on the... Hello, Capex. Sachin, sir. Sorry to restrict. Uh, can you please join the queue for follow-up questions? Sure. Okay, so thank you. So the next question is from the line of Shrinjana Mittal from Ratnataraya Capital. Please go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just a small bookkeeping question from my side. Uh, so, can you help me with the EBITDA number for the Kaplan Sterile Disease for this quarter? Hello? Yeah, request uh, CFO or Satya to... Uh, did, did you hear the question? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks, uh, Hi, good evening. This is Satya Narayan here. Uh, see, the EBITDA for Kaplan Sterile for this quarter ended 31st December 20. 20- 
and uh, just a small follow up to that so uh, if we uh, exclude the sterile business or if we see the uh, if we see the business excess sterile so the EBITDA margin for the nine months is uh, somewhere around 36 37% so is it fair to assume that our core uh, uh, business like excess sterile is uh, margins are going back to the uh, pre covid range like before 23 35, 35. So as, uh, yeah, as, uh, as our CFO had explained, I think it will be difficult to look at the company on a quarter to quarter basis, you know. So the base number that we are comfortable giving out is that our gross margins are always between 55, 57%. And our, our, our EBITDA path and everything have been very similar, 35, 36, and then path has always been around, hovering around the 25%. We are today a, 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 a global company, right? In whatever small uh, size we are still, we are still a global company. I don't think you can net off this and net off that because that might not present the right picture. Are we growing in the right direction? Are all uh, levers of growth uh, firing up in the right areas? That's what uh, we have to look at, you know. So we are a consolidated, uh, uh, we are consolidating our positions in uh, all the areas where we are operating in. Here, one more thing I would like to say here about this Kaplan status. See, our profitability is actually fluctuating because of the fact of the filings. The filing fees today is $240,000 per product. We are in the process of increasing our filing. We are also increasing our R&D. Most of the companies of our size, they do only CMO. They are not actually companies who are going for their own products. We are not the CMO. We are companies which are similar to the medium and big companies. Maybe we don't have that kind of actually reach now, but we are sure of actually reaching to that level, maybe say two to three years from now. Yeah, okay. Thank you. 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 That was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Kapil Yadav for closing comments. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you, management, for taking out time for this Q3 earnings call. And you have answered all the questions. Thanks for that, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Kapil and Dolan Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you very much. On behalf of Dolat Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>